everybody, it's Renari. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I took a little two day break just to start off the new year with a clear head. So I hope you missed me as much as I missed you. Probably not, but I missed you guys. <laughs> Today I'm going to be doing a video that I've been wanting to do for two months at least by now, um, which is K-pop history. Like I want to know how we got to where we are, where I am doing reaction videos to K-pop groups and and how they've taken over the world <laughs> um so this is called k-pop history in 20 minutes from co taji to bts um i'm assuming shin e shin -E? i still don't know how to say that properly i'm assuming they are going to be on there with taemin um i i've just read some of your comments saying that you know they are a, a lot of the reason why a lot of these artists now exist because their popularity and what they've done for the k-pop industry and of course bts has done a lot so i'm sure this is going to be a wild ride and i'm going to learn a lot which is exactly what i want to do it's the whole point of this channel <laughs> if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe um we're almost at 200 subscribers which is insane to me <laughs> i know a lot of the other re reactors you probably watch are like at 100,000. But I, I am very thankful to be where I am. Like, that is insane that that many people are following me. Um, so thank you so much if you do subscribe to my channel and like my videos and comment along with me. Uh, let's get into this video. All right, we've got K-pop history. There's one thing this video needs. K-pop! That was so stupid. That was from the YouTube Rewind from a couple years ago. K-pop, K-pop, Korean pop. K-pop. K-pop, popular music originating in South Korea and encompassing a variety of styles. As you Already, sorry. <laughs> Already, this definition of K-pop. Popular music originating in South Korea and encompassing a variety of styles. This is why I hate the word K-pop. It's not pop music. Not necessarily. It's a variety of styles and it's popular but it's not like i get that the word pop comes from popular but what we know as pop music is not what k-pop necessarily is i mean a lot of it is but as we know from bts a lot of it is not a lot of it's rap rock techno electronic whatever it's just completely different things um and i've heard both jenny from blackpink and uh namjoon talk about like how can you define k-pop why are we defined as k-pop why aren't we more than that why aren't we just artists um so i think maybe this is outdated but it is what it is popular music originating in south korea and in it definitely doesn't Australia help with style. the image of what k-pop is grown exponentially everyone in the world like it or not must have seen a k-pop related video at least once either if it's gangnam style I or hope. a bts video nah, or an annoying k-pop yeah. dancing meme on twitter but you might not be <laughs> sure on what k-pop actually is and where and when it began well it all comes from a country called south korea a peninsula located in east asia in between china and japan korea was doing great with its kingdoms and dynasties for more than 4,000 years until 1910 to 1940 45 when Korea was colonized yes. by Japan. And from 1950 to 1953, the Korean War happened, splitting Korea into North Which and South. Which are still and in Korea a war. Was stuck in the Cold War. Due to war and all, the economy wasn't that great. Thus, the music industry wasn't that public nor diverse. Well, Korea did have music like traditional sounds or Japanese influenced trot. 1970s, economy got a little better. Jeans, acoustic guitars, young kids enjoyed <laughs> life, rock, folk music happened. But still, the government doesn't like human jeans. freedom and creativity. <laughs> they want you to work, 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 work. 1980s, two words folk songs and ballads first korean ballads kick in people like these dudes make ballad really popular legendary dudes like Cho yong Pil pop out bands like shinoe and jirguka pop out people start listening to these dudes instead of these dudes until the 90s <laughs> korea gets these rich. dudes madonna no one's unemployed. <laughs> people call it the miracle of han river successful olympics cd distribution kids get to wear nike shoes buy music i've also been uh like this is like a downer but i've been more researching into north korea and south korea and the war and the ongoing issues between them um so I, i've just off topic but i've just been reading a lot into the divide and and what's going on in north korea so i'm i'm just taking in a lot of information about different cultures right now <laughs> Music, go to concerts, clubs happen, dancing becomes a thing. Finally, the good old 90s dancing arrived. becomes Ding a thing. Hi, hi, I'm K pop. All these new genres start to bloom hip hop, dance, RB, soul, gospel, and of course, the popularity of ballads and folk songs continue. Now, all these artists start writing their own songs. A lot of singer songwriters appear, like Shin Sung Woon, Lee Sung Hwan, Yoon Jong Shin, Cheol Lam Hae, Poi, and more. Boom, Toy. March 1992. This man. dude named Seo Taeji appears out of nowhere. Well, <laughs> actually, he was in the aforementioned rock band Shinawi as a bassist, a but rock in the meantime, band. he was doing his own That's thing. So and cool. 
world of MIDI music, aka electronic. I still can't music. imagine like Korean rock music. Different. His crew dances like crazy. His band Sotaeji and Kids release an album called Yo. This Tejin is so nineties. <laughs> I know. Oh they my god. All the existing awards out there. Similar groups like Juice might be competitors, but Sotaeji and Kids and their songs and performances change everything. Critics claim that's so to to J and Kids. In Korean pop music history. He destroys genres like trap, ballad, and folk music. They release four albums afterwards until 1996. He mixes up hip hop and traditional music in Hyoga. He also likes techno and even uses heavy metal rock in classroom idea, criticizing the Korean education system. And then the public. I feel like I would love this. This seems song, like classic 80s, 90s. They keep on tackling social issues like reunification, environment, drugs, education. He's basically the Tupac of K-pop. Speaking of Tupac, he even touches gangster rap in his last album title, "Come Back Home." And then they disband. More like this. Is that? Yep. Just well, like. <laughs> you don't need to know what I just dropped. Um. <laughs> uh. Come back home. Is that the song that uh, BTS had uh, covered that I know? Like, baby, you should come back home. That one. I haven't actually listened to the full thing. That will be on the channel one day. Like that, leaving one message. We've showed you everything we can try. Korea freaks out. Kids don't go to school. Protest. Attempt suicide. People say K-pop is dead. Well, false alarm. Some it is that kids song. Be gone, but their impact still lives. Now, listening radio equals lame. On the other hand, watching TV performances, dance music, choreography. <coughs> style competition equals cool young teenage fans official fan clubs fan meetings fan fix housing fans fan wars capital artist management it was like a cult and sotaeji and kids were their idol on the side the tornado dance from i know was the first dance choreo that went viral okay so he just said like fan groups would start and they'd be obsessive and like a cult and that's you know that's the bad impression that you get out of k-pop music when you just hear k-pop you kind of think of that and you're not you don't really at least in the western world that kind of scares you off a little bit but um he did say they thought of him as an idol so is that where the word came from exactly like it's from from that group now corporate see money in k-pop and idol businesses samsung tucson hyundai lg Daewoo, lotte all make their own record companies and labels competition begins huge investments flow from their mother company ambitious scouting projects new market but no system yet expenses over issued no transparency business based on few inner circle connections result obviously all gone in a few years big failure but then there's dsp the founder yuyeon had some actual DSP. experience managing big artists like tejina yuyeol shimishin and sobang cha sobang cha was actually close to an idol group model way before Sa and Kids in 1987. However, their music was more trap based and had very simple dances, thus not as impactful as an idol group like Sa and Kids. Anyways, Lee Ho who had the experience, makes his own label DSP in 1991. Wasn't really successful during the Sa era. Then in 1996, launches a group literally called Idol that initially <laughs> had decent popularity well, that but makes gets sense. demolished by SM Entertainment's HOT. 1996 okay. So SM is the original, it's kind of the original K-pop uh, entertainment label uh the dsp one was kind of they tried with idol but in the, the end era. sm in 1996 launches a group literally called idol that initially had decent sm popularity, took over gets and sm is still SM entertainment's hot still making hot k-pop idols distinct fashion and hairstyles criticizing society HOT look at that that's crazy famous sm entertainment founded by izuman in short sm starts as sm studio in 1989 then reforms into sm entertainment in 1995 sm develops a systematic idol training system and earns huge success with HOT. DSP gets mad. 1997, they <laughs> throw out sex kits. SM activates their trap card. Girl group SES debuts in December 1997. Ah, is this the first female K-pop group? And then DSP says, well, actually, no, IMF says, everyone hold your fire. Korea will be entering the economic crisis. People lose jobs, businesses go bankrupt, half of the entertainment labels shut down, TV music programs get canceled. People are struggling. They're jumping off bridges, so they aren't really cool or interested about idols. Well, 1998 comes. SMB like, the show must go on. Pops out <laughs> Shinwa. DSP says, hold my beer. Shinwa. That's who I was talking about, right? In the beginning, I, I am embarrassed. <laughs> I was talking about Shinwa, not Shin Shinny. Cold. At this point, SM and DSP is the marvel in DC comics of this era. HOT versus Chexkiz, SES versus Finkel, Shinwa versus GOD. Well, GOD was actually produced by a third company called JYP and wasn't actually the typical dance idol group, but I'll get to that later. Okay, that's Each company first group JYP shares the trophies and awards idol around group. music shows turn after turn. And of course, on the way, there were other groups like Baby Vox, Chakra, Cleo, and talented solo artists like Yoo Jun, Park Ji as well. Looking back. 
fact, we now call this era the first generation of K-pop. Meanwhile, you might be wondering whatever happened to Sotaeji and the boys after they disbanded. I don't know about Sotaeji himself, but one dude for sure was planning something. One Yang dude. Yang who was the rapper and dancer of Sotaeji and boys, was trying out his talent as a producer, but was kind of unlucky in the meantime. But anyways, opened up his own company, Hyun Label, in 1996, but kind of flopped with a group called Keep Six. Then renames his company to MF Label and launches the hip-hop duo Junushan. Junushan surprisingly did pretty well, even though hip-hop was pretty new. Yang Yeonseok was well known to have an influence and background in hip-hop dance and music. He was spotted in E-Tail and dancing all the time before his debut dates. So this background and success with Junushan led him to reform his company into YG all Entertainment All the song, and these songs in the background seem like they could time. be, you know, like Western, Western songs. <laughs> First generation of K-pop was sparked by Sotaeji and boys. Everything got systematic, like the training systems and all. Groups with crazy hair, crazy fashion, and dance music. K-pop's still kind of strange, new, but popular to the Those public. outfits are trying incredible. To imitate American pop. While corporate <laughs> yeah. back labels no, died with an IMF prices, outfit, labels with professional boys. music background become big, like DSP, SM, and YG. It was the opening, a door to a new era, to the 21st century. Second generation begins. Wait, says 1.5 gen. On the conversion to second gen, there is a transition stage. <coughs> Surprisingly, a lot of solo artists who sing ballads, R&B, and groups that do ballads or rock become super popular. Song Shi Kyung, Hee Song, Vibe, MC The Max, Buzz, The Cross, BOS, SG Wannabe. Wow. Then where'd K-pop go? While well, many talented solos were there to bridge the transition, the famous Boa, known as Asia Star, arguably she's... the most successful solo female K-pop artist she's in killing history, it. from SM Entertainment, got casted by Izuman himself and That's debuted like, at totally August Britney. 2000. Britney also Spears. debuted in Japan. Critics state Boa is one of the biggest contributors and pioneer in opening foreign markets for K-pop and SM. Boa gets to get Makes all these first, youngest, most, blah 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 titles and rewrites K-pop history. Other solo artists also kept the K-pop flame burning Rain. with competitions such as Rain and Seven. Speaking of Rain, let's get back to JYP. Park Jin Young, aka JYP, is this dude that was active during the Sotaeji era as well. Initially, got refused numerous times from labels due to his weird face and body, but finally the in face and body as a solo wow. artist. Tale is, SM himself rejects JYP from an audition but later asks in private just because he wants to buy songs JYP produced. JYP is extremely talented in dancing and also being sexy, which was a first for a male at that time. Won many number mm. ones during the era even with the competition with Sotaeji and Kids. Became a singer-songwriter wow. and producer and made hit songs like Honey and Swing Baby. With that experience, goes on as a producer producing G.O.D. once called The Nation's Group and also excavates Park ji who sang Adult Ceremony, also produced by JYP. And in the midst of that, makes his own company, JYP Entertainment. Back to Rain. Rain was a back dancer of JYP and Park ji JYP trained ah. Rain and debuted him, also giving him many hit songs like How to Avoid the Sun and It's Raining. <sighs> Boa from SM, Rain from JYP, Seven from YG. This and is that when we started. started Boa from SM, That Rain started it. Look, look at those familiar from JYP, groups, from familiar YG. entertainment this companies. This is when we start to see the three companies grow and become the now known big three of K-pop, yep. SM, JYP, YG. Another fun fact about the 1.5 generation is that many solo artists tried their luck after disbanding from the first generation groups like Kangta, mm. Pada, Okjuyeon, Unjiwon. However, to be honest, their popularity wasn't like before. Except maybe Iori, former Finkel member that was least She's popular gorgeous. among the members, but suddenly pops up with a sexy solo debut and becomes Korea's diva. Finally, it's second gen. The idol groups are back, and the public is used to the word idol. SM Entertainment introduces TVXQ in 2004. They get the Rookie Awards, actually all the awards. Gets a Taesang <laughs> on their second debut year and gets a Grand Slam in 2006, another Grand Slam in 2008, or a Conchar number one in Japan. It's not a stretch to say they basically conquered Korea, Japan, and China. SM Never heard rich. of them. They make more groups like Super Junior in 2005, Girls Super Generation Junior in 2007, heard of Shiny, Generation. and FX in 2009. Super Junior becomes extremely Shiny. popular with songs like Sorry Sorry in China and Southeast Asia. Girls Generation becomes the nation girl group with their stunning visuals and charmful songs like Kissing You and Baby Baby. They don't stop with Korea. They go off to conquer Japan I don't think that's my style G of music, G just from oh, bringing all those titles from Japan outward perspective here. Shiny puts out super addictive songs like Juliet, Ring Ding Dong, Lucifer, shiny. and achieves attention from Right? That's what you said, Shiny? Not shiny. Shiny puts out super shiny. addictive songs okay. like Juliet, Ring Ding Dong, Lucifer, and achieves attention from mostly Japan and Southeast Asia. I know Asia, Ring Ding Dong. Touring all around these areas. FX shows the experimental side of SM. They carry a unique concept with all of their songs with obscure lyrics. Their unique electronic songs get very positive reactions from professional music critics. And note that we start to see non-Korean members, such as Victoria and Amber. With all these groups, SM is now all over Asia. Now SM might be big, I no group know that could rival song. TVXQ, but here comes a big group. Big. Bang. I've heard of Big Bang. 
Big Bang from YG Entertainment is a little different. Debuted in 2006 as five members from a real survival program conducted by Yang Yunzok himself, Big Bang places its roots into hip-hop. 2007, they released their EP, Always, with the song, Lies. This song was so big that it made them escalate to the top immediately. Then, major hit songs after hit songs like Last Farewell, How Do I Do, Red Sunset make them the unquestionable number one group in Korea. They go on you can tell they have like Japan activities, world the style tours, that sweep awards, idols have now. To list achievement. They go on further with their career with mega hits like Blue, Fantastic Baby, Loser, Baby, Bang Bang Bang. Big Bang becomes the most popular bang, bang, influential bang. listen to group. <laughs> no male group can rival them in the second gen except maybe early TVXQ. The biggest point that differentiated them would be that the general public, including men, loved and sang most of their hit songs. Big Bang's leader G-Dragon <laughs> produced most of these mega hit songs, not to mention his successful solo work, and lives as the biggest Korean fashion, music, and trend icon I've to heard G-Dragon's so, name around a lot. In YG Entertainment, probably 21. Four member group debuted in 2009 with a very different concept. Wait. Strong Entertainment, probably 21. Four member What? This day. Sorry. So, Who's Girls Generation's rival then? In YG Entertainment, probably 21. Four Is it really pronounced 21? I thought it was to anyone. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm learning. All right. It's 21. A very gotcha. Concept, strong female image. This is mega hits like Fire, I Don't Care, Go Away, Lonely, I Am The Best. They were the best. Ranked as one of the best K-pop groups of the past decade by Billboard. And a female group that finally offered an alternative concept from the traditional pretty cutesy girl group stereotype. Girls Generation cool. and 21 weren't rivals in style because they were so different. However, yeah. the two groups were huge and probably the most successful girl groups in second gen K-pop history. Speaking of girl okay, groups, we have to go back gen. to JYP because JYP is known as the girl group Royal Company. Wonder Girls is among one, debuted in 2007 put out major hits like Tell Me, So Hot, Nobody, which were all viral hits within the nation and Asia due to their simple and catchy point dances. In 2008 High One Soul Music Awards, they received their first Taesang as a girl group competing with Big Bang and TVXQ. Before Girls Generation got extremely popular, they had the nation's girl group title in 2007 to 2008. Their style was distinct compared to Girls Generation in 20. Sorry, I was just looking at my phone. I have like a grocery order coming and that's, that's it. <laughs> because it was mostly retro pop or electro funk. Wonder Girls were the first to appear on an American TV show showing the possibilities of expansion of K-pop to the West. Nobody was the first K-pop song to enter the Billboard Top 100 chart. On the other wow. hand, JYP puts out boy groups such as 2PM and 2AM who respectively have their monster idol and 2PM and 2AM, really? And Ballad Prince concert. Really? 2PM does especially well with hit songs like 10 Out of 10, Again and Again, and Heartbeat, also becoming a sensation in Korea and Japan. Here we see Nick Kun, a member of 2PM from Thailand, showing that K-pop is surely expanding beyond China and Japan. Now, it would be safe to say that the second gen of K-pop was led by the mentioned groups. There are other groups, such as 4Minute, who made a strong impact and shift on the concept of girl groups. Then, there was Kata, produced by DSB, and were known as big competitors to the Wonder Girls and Girls Generation. Japan went crazy over them. I don't Everyone know what, songs okay. And Okay. like Step and Mr. Now, can we move on third gen? Well, maybe yes or maybe no. Some people draw the line by 10 years, as in 2000 to 2010. Some experts draw the line by sudden inflation and saturation of groups. A lot of groups start to pop up, like Beast and Black Team, Blue B184, Block B, DAP, B2B, B, B, Vix, Infinite Team, Tom, Newest, and more. For girl groups, So, <laughs> I caught two in there. Block B, I know because of the dance battle of BTS, a uh, dance rap battle, and then Newest, I watched them on the uh, New Year's Eve Live, and I actually... I might react to them. I don't know. Is anybody a newest fan that watches me? Because their vocals were insane. I, I, I want to know more about them for sure. Like, regardless if it's on my channel. <laughs> After school, TRA. Go secret missing nine years girls day sister a pink esid aoa and more so the groups that debuted in the late 2000s and early 2010s are tricky to categorize plus from this point on please don't hate me for not going in depth of every single group or missing some of them because that would change the title of this video to k-pop history explained in 200 minutes but yes. if you were to say there was a dominant group of this transition era it's exo exo debuts in 2012 in two groups exo m and exo k another experimental approach from sm trying to divide and expand markets anyways exo wins pops and grows china is basically exos exo has the biggest and also most hmm. notorious fandom in korea that's how much people love exo wow. they put out hit after hits like growl overdose call me baby monster loto their only rival might be the still yet hugely successful big bang and then they slowly really open the doors to third gen now these are some i don't get like i would consider exo to 
rival BTS. Like I would consider them in the same generation, but I guess I guess not the historically. Of the third generation of K-pop, one mass inflation and red ocean of idols saturated market. Two globalization as a norm, catching the global audience is a must. Three idol audition survival programs. Because of the red ocean of idols, naturally the mass public begins to dislike K-pop idols due to lack of creativity, overlapping concepts, and exhaustion of idol music. Yeah, this is fair. where the public starts to divide the term idol with artist. Many major TV audition programs become popular looking for real talented singers and vocals rather than visually appealing dance based idols that only yeah i guess like how do you one song well this how do you <laughs> bang pd how do you uh yeah how do you categorize who's an who gets to be an idol and who just gets to be an artist who just gets to be somebody that makes music this is what the public thought at that time i know there are exceptions among idols too oh yeah in the meantime in 2012 the worldwide viral hit size Gangnam style happened getting the once most viewed video on the planet thanks to its addictive hilarious dance and beat it got a number two on the billboard hot 100. this was basically the first time that the entire world notices a country called south korea and k-pop without yeah, having true. to mention nukes and this dude and that's normal that True. by the way in the third gen despite the influx of idol groups the only ones that survive are groups that have amazing music quality or musical talent or something different because the korean market is so small and saturated it now becomes a norm to have at least more than one global english speaking member in the group this member usually is in charge of speaking during overseas interviews and tours not only member wise but marketing and music wise the attempts become more globalized too testing out new markets such as south america in the meantime the public and entertainment companies want a system to get the best quality idols out there and that is by following the TV trend by making TV audition survival programs with worldwide contestants. This system allows idols to gain publicity even so there are other and also verify popularity and other talent. shows Although other than Island that kind of do the same thing. Produce X have been extremely popular. It got caught in corruption and manipulation issue recently, which likely put out the credibility and support towards these survival programs. Now, to name a few groups that are leading the third generation currently, definitely the girl group Trinity, Twice, Blackpink, Red Velvet. JYP's girl group Twice has earned the absent nation's girl group title since Girls' Generation, along with major hit songs that dominated Korea and Japan mostly, like Cheer Up, TT, Knock Knock, Likey, and Fancy. Interestingly, these girls were also a result of an audition program called 16. YG's girl group Blackpink has the record of most YouTube views, 56.7 million in 24 hours, with its Kill This Love music video topping Ariana Grande. Their music videos have this much views each which saves my time trying so to so much more now <laughs> also they're the highest charting female k-pop group on billboard hot 100 and 200 plus they had an epic stage at coachella too sm girl group red velvet might not be as big as the former two in size but is always praised by the public and critics for their unique sound and high quality songs time magazine has highlighted their versatile musical style and named them as one of the best k-pop groups billboard agreed too in 2019 fun fun was that their song Psycho by Red Velvet. I think I've heard that before, like just the name. But that sounds like Ariana Grande. And critics for their unique sound and high quality songs. That, Time that Magazine has highlighted damn their good versatile vocals. musical <laughs> style and named them as one of the best K-pop groups. Billboard agreed too in 2019. Fun fact, Red Velvet was the first K-pop group to perform in North Korea and Kim Jong-un adjusted yes, his schedule I've to go see them. Yes, I read into now, that recently. Now let's not try to leave out many other talented, hardworking girl groups such as Mama Moo, Momoland, Luna, Eyes One, G Idol, CLC, I feel like Dream, all Patrick, of these, Friend, almost Lovelace, all of oh these girl, groups are getting like Walmart, really popular Apple, right Mickey, now. Mickey, and more. As for boy groups, it's hard to pick a definitive popularity or impact i mean it's it's there's a lot of them but i feel like there's one <laughs> but just to name a few 17 nct got seven winner icon monster x 80 stray kids are definitely the biggest and most popular globally most of these groups actively go on world tours and appear on western tv shows nowadays and then there are groups such as bab impact victim astro pentagon sf9 the boys ace jvj golden child intuit umb very very one us and more so, so many, many girl groups boy groups mixed groups new global audience thus various music styles as well you name it k-pop has it oh you don't like groups super produced modern electronic music maybe try iu out she's korea's nation's sister and also nation's singer been around since 2008 with numerous ballad and i know her song was sugar single-handedly but... has the popularity equivalent to k-pop's biggest idols then there's k-hip-hop r&b a whole scene of its own maybe check out zico who has an overlap background with k-pop then there's rock maybe check out bands like day six and flying the rose and more there's rock <laughs> i don't know why i'm surprised Okay, I might have checked that out. K hip hop R and B, a whole scene of its own. Maybe check out Zico, who has an overlap background with K pop. Who are they? There's Rock. Maybe day check out bands like Day Six and Flying the and Rose. Flying and and so the Rose. it's already 2020. Technically, 10 years have passed again, and the line is blurring between third gen and fourth gen. Then, what would be the standards of dividing the generations? I can't be the one deciding, but just to add my personal two cents, maybe the line could be drawn by observing groups that start off already with a bigger fandom globally rather than domestically in Korea from the pre debut and rookie phase. 
In short, maybe no more validation or dependence from Korean fans needed, or there's an alternative True. view of simply drawing the line by post BTS. And yes, I know that is what I was going to say. Post BTS is probably a new generation, and Hypen is a new generation just based on this video. Everything after BTS is, but BTS isn't even like I guess BTS is technically third generation, but they're their own thing. I don't know. It's so weird to explain. I know y'all are screaming, what? Not a single mention of BTS until now, but hold on a little bit more. I have a whole buffet for you. Well, <laughs> anyways, this whole generation dividing process is a whole debate subject of its own, so let's just leave it there and throw it to the comment section. Finally, there is one group that needs a thorough separate section in K-pop history, and it is BTS. It's crazy. That is BTS crazy. That is, like, okay, look at this. Look at this shot right here of them in their debut days. There's no way, especially knowing this history, like they grew up in South Korea, they know all these groups. There's no way that they would think that they would beat them in awards, uh, like everything. Like, I don't even know how to explain it. Awards, fandom, worldwide global recognition, everything. There's no way that these kids right now thought that they would be people that are getting their own sections in history because they have just changed everything. Like, that is... Uh, don't get choked up. A small <laughs> company called Big Hit under the producer named Pang Shiok, who was a former colleague and good friend to JYP, but split paths to make his own company. Pang Shiok gathered seven members originally and planned to make a hip hop group. However, the concept and musical style diversified over the years. BTS didn't gain much attention during their first years, often getting mocked by their group name, that means Bulletproof Boy Scouts, and apparently some or many people thought their appearances were unpretty. However, BTS differentiated themselves with <laughs> other idols by speaking you? about the unspoken in their lyrics, such as mental health, youth problems, social issues, and the journey towards loving oneself. BTS also made their own universe and story in their music videos. They made moderate success until they got mainstream with their songs like I Need You, Dope, Save Me, and Fire. After that, every move they made pretty much became history. They topped the Billboard 200 charts four times in a row alongside the Beatles, appeared on multiple major American TV shows, got awarded by the Billboard Music Awards, AMAs multiple times, did a Grammys act, did a UN speech, did a cover of Times, had stadium world tours, including Wembley and South. And now our Entertainer of the Year on the Time Magazine got number one on the Billboard ch charts twice. Three times? I, I can't even keep up. Um, have a Grammy nomination for 2021 oh that's coming up soon and have just taken over literally my life <laughs> Saudi Arabia sold over 20 million cumulative albums to this date BTS has become so big that they become expressed as the BTS or Korean invasion just like the British invasion from the Beatles by multiple critics and journalists. Many point out that it's even more significant regarding the fact that BTS's music and lyrics were not in English but in Korean. Also started off as underdogs in the K-pop industry itself, struggling without the support of big capital nor media. In the meantime, there might have been attempts to compete with BTS, for example, SM making their own Avengers by combining members from existing successful groups like NCT? Shiny, EXO, NCT into a collaborative single group called Super M. Super well, they M, did get right. the number one on Billboard 200, but many people criticized the method of bundling issues in the process. However, industry-wise, mm -hmm. it was a fresh attempt that never happened in K-pop history, trying to officially combine members from different groups into one with an it's agenda to cool make success concept. in the American or global market. And it is these new attempts that fuel K-pop to go further on. Anyways, back to BTS, it's not an overstatement <laughs> to say that BTS is probably bigger than all of K-pop combined at this point. Yes. However, from Sotechi to BTS, many groups existed. And every unfortunate not for bts or not for anybody but like it's just like even army that i talk to like they they don't want to listen to other music because they just want to support bts but it's like did you see all those k-pop groups that you could be supporting as well like the way i am starting to see it is i have listened to so many western artists and i know so much about them like i don't care about ariana grande justin bieber sean mendez whoever like blah 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 you can list them on and on and on the people that have been dominating pop in the western world for the last 10 you know 10 15 years i l have listened to all of them i know most of their songs uh same with hip-hop and rock and r&b and stuff like that so i know a lot about their lives i don't want to know so why wouldn't i be able to do the same thing for different pop k-pop idols it just seems like it's the same thing and it's almost like wrong, in my opinion, to not give everyone a chance. Um, 
just like you would do if you listened to the radio and you were like, hey, I like a song. I just want to give everyone a chance. <laughs> Every time, records were broken. People were surprised. Back then, no one imagined anything bigger than TVXQ, Girls' Generation, Big Bang, EXO, Gangnam Style. But here we are, K-pop is still evolving. The market is getting bigger and it's becoming more well-known all around the world. So it's definitely going to be interesting. The market is getting bigger Sorry. and it's becoming more well-known all around that is not Toronto. <laughs> so it's definitely, definitely going to be York. interesting to see what happens in the future. I know there's a couple in Toronto. Will it just disappear as a trend or get even bigger like it always has? I would assume it would get even bigger. <laughs> well, that was the history of K-pop in 20 minutes. I feel like there's a couple of things that they could have gotten into more detail rather than just giving like a timeline of events. I feel like they could have given uh, certain impactful things that have happened. Um, like I know that there was that one guy oh my god i'm gonna have to look up the name i don't want to get it wrong god yu sung jun or steve um and then that i i read all about him already so i was just surprised not to see him in the video because he evaded military service blah 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 you can have your own opinions on that i have my own opinions on that but i feel like that was important right like he was one of the biggest idols i don't even think his name was mentioned in here unless i missed it uh but Anyways, that was interesting, very interesting. I love learning history and about about what I'm I'm reacting to in more details. So if I hope that if you haven't seen that video or you don't know the history, you learned along with me. And if you did, I hope you enjoyed my reaction. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And I will see you in the next video coming very, very soon. Daily videos. Daily videos, I've decided. <laughs>